Okay. Okay. Hello, welcome to London. Okay. And um, I love Wish. Oh. Really, really feels like traditional Disney. Yeah. And um, I've noticed there are a lot of references to the uh, old uh, animations, which I really enjoyed spotting during the, the movie. And which one were your favorite ones? You know, the ones you <laughs> like the most. Well, I would say, first and foremost, we set out to create a completely original story that yeah, stands yeah, on yeah, its yes. own. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, coming from there, you know, it's, I think, the most Disney thing about it is the wishing on a, upon a star aspect of it and star being a big character. And uh, and I think one of my favorite things about the, the references is that star itself is inspired by Mickey Mouse with the star shape, uh, with, the, with the heart-shaped uh, mask. <laughs> But then there's the green magic from like all of the villains that Magnifico uh, has, and uh, yeah, and I, I love any of the nods that just f feel natural and organic to yeah. the Absolutely, story. Yeah. Uh, I think Asha's friends are also a fun, fun little nod as well. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, the film is not only um, like a celebration of wishes, but it also feels a call to action because the movie is you know about yes, let's stand up for our rights, this is not right. And um, how do you see wish inspiring audiences to pursue their dreams, but also persevere through challenges? I mean, the character of Magnifico himself, it feels very close to home in terms of, is very kind of narcissistic, psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> the most dangerous kind. Yeah, the most, and it, the, the, our world feels filled with this kind mm -hmm. of uh, individual. So it's you know, how do you, the question would be like, how do you see wish inspiring audiences to really pursue their dreams and, and persevere through the challenges? I think we can both answer this one. I mean, uh, it, it is a classic, you know, uh, heroine versus a villain, good versus evil story. Uh, and in this particular story, uh, the the villain is uh, charismatic and charming and yet also has this narcissistic side. Uh, so you don't necessarily see him devolve into evil until pressure is put on him uh, and his power is threatened. And then you see his true nature. Yeah. And I would say, you know, we all have Magnificos in our lives. They're everywhere, you know, no matter who you are. And uh, the world can be a tough place. It just can. And uh, so movies like this, to me, are important because they inspire you uh, to keep the hope. Uh, know that it's going to be really rough out there, but at the end, you can persevere. So I'm glad that you were picking up on yeah. that. And I think that's what I love about Asha is that when she sees something that's an injustice, you know, her wish is not a, a, a selfish one. It's very selfless. She wants people's wishes to return to her family, to be returned to her community. And, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, so the, the cent central theme is like there's no greater power in the universe than someone with a true wish in their heart. So can you elaborate on this? I really like it. This is a powerful message. I hope it comes across. Well, the power of hope, you know, and that, that, that is what a wish in your heart is. It's the potential of being better, of being your full self, of accepting who you are. Once you are able to say that wish out loud and tell the universe what it is, then you're accepting your full self. So you can actually go on this journey of life a little bit better, with a little bit more courage. And, uh, and then when you say it out loud, people might help you. You know, the helpers, you know, the Valentinos and the stars of the world, they exist. So, uh, so that's why this message is... And talking about Valentino, um, um, I read that you, you mentioned, um, Juan Pablo, uh, um, that you did some research on Walt Disney himself, yeah. and including his childhood um, farm in, Mizu in Missouri? Yeah. Missouri, right. So this is Marceline. Is it called Marceline? Marceline. Marceline. Mm -hmm. And how did this research influence the creation of the characters like... Um, the, the the goat the the pajama wearing goat. <laughs> well, we're we're fortunate enough to be surrounded by Disney veterans uh, uh, that will lend us books and know all of the history. So it was very easy to do research with all of these folks. And uh, and then Walt was just like a big part of the movie from the very beginning because he was the biggest dreamer. You know, uh, one of my favorite quotes from Kurt's book is "One wish can change the world." That's what. 
that's what Walt did. That's what Ash is doing. So there's perils there. And uh, and then there's the the wishing tree for Asha too. Walt in in Marceline also had a dreaming tree. So there's like little knots like that to to the dreamer and Walt, but the dreamer in all of us. I love this even more. <laughs> I, I like the movie before, but now you know. Um, so as filmmakers, yeah. you know, the aspect of a production of Wish, um, I, what part of the aspect of this film are you most proud of? considering the unique challenges of kind of any innovations involved in, in bringing this story alive? You know, uh, first of all, it's the collaboration I think we're most proud of, uh, both in terms of story, because we have an idea of what the story is, but we never really know where that idea is going to take us as we develop. In this particular case, also on the production side, we had the visual style of the movie. Uh, we knew that we wanted to feel like a storybook illustration, watercolor, but we wanted the characters to be dimensional and be able to move the camera to bring the audience into that storybook. Uh, we knew what the goal was, but we didn't know exactly how we were going to do it. So artists working with technology really had to develop that at the same time that we were developing the story. And fortunately, it all comes together and, and uh, we can deliver the movie to you. And um, if I may ask you about the location, right? Mm -hmm. When you researched uh, for the location, what, I mean, I heard about Mediterranean inspired. And yeah. so did you go to some places that you that caught your eyes and you thought, yes, that's it. This is, this. we take some from here, some from there. So are there any particular physical locations that you visited and that inspired you for to create La Rosas? Yes, Rosas. Rosas. Uh, yeah. So it all comes from storytelling uh, mm -hmm. because the movie is about a magical kingdom where people from all over the world are coming because who doesn't want to get their wish granted? So it was logical that it would be multicultural because it's a destination for communities from all over the world. Uh, and knowing that it was a fairy tale and that was fairy tales are usually set in the ancient past, so the Middle Ages, we found a place that where this organically happened. So in that Mediterranean area, it's between continents. It's between the south of Europe and the north of Africa. So you did have that multicultural element organically. And, uh, and there's a lot of architecture that uh, is inspired by the south of Spain and that area, but also Morocco and that part of the world. I, I think we pulled inspiration from, uh, uh, you know, Spain and Portugal and, and, and Morocco. And, Morocco. Uh. and uh, you know, we, we started this movie during the pandemic, so we didn't actually get to uh, visit physically, but... Uh, thanks to research, uh, we and immersed our ourselves and our consultant. We had a great consultant that's an anthropologist who is from Morocco that has really studied that time and period. His name is Dr. Omar Boom. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. I would have thought the Baleares Island, but yes, it could be. Yeah. But maybe other areas of southern Spain, you're yeah. right. Sevilla or yeah. Alhambra. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can see some of those... Yeah. Um, locations being used in, in the imagination, uh, in an Im imaginatory way, yes. right? Yes, and um, how do you wish, uh, how do you hope Wish will contribute to the legacy of, of the Disney animation studios that marks 100 years uh, of movie making, I think, iconic movie making? I, I think like a lot of movies before us, hopefully it will inspire people, it will leave them with sense of hope. Hopefully they will, will come to the theater with their families during the holidays, their friends, but also to experience the movie as part of a community because what we're noticing as we go to the premiere is that connection between the audience and the screen is palpable. You laugh harder with an audience. You, you, the emotions are greater when you feel that connection of the entire audience with the screen. It's, it's quite magical. Well, thank you so much for giving us this amazing film that feels kind of Disney and it's really core yes. you know mm. so thank you oh, very much that's great to hear that's great to hear thank you